Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a special, hopefully recurring, installment of Martial Arts Radio. Today, I'm joined by Andrew and Gabe, and we're going to talk about how we would fight Jeff Speakman's character, Jeff Sanders, in the movie The Perfect Weapon. Stick around. Should be fun. And if we do our jobs right, you'll have all kinds of things to, to, to say about what we're going to do. Now, of course, I'm joined by my recurring, often co-host, Andrew Adams. Andrew, welcome. Well, thanks, 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 thanks. Thanks for being here. And a face that some of you may not know, I'm sure a lot of you know the voice, Gabe Sio. Yes, thank you. It was good to be here. It's, it's good to have you here. <laughs> this, is this the second time you've been on video ever for the show? Yes, yes, yeah. second, second time I've been on video. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of kind of a different experience, isn't it? It is. And uh don't it, pick your nose. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you can if you want. Just you know, <clears throat> kind of gross. Yeah. Uh well the the first thing I want to say to the audience is if you are watching or listening to this, it means that we decided that it came out good enough that we're sharing it with you. This is a concept that started I, I had an idea. I bounced it off Andrew. Andrew liked it. We bounced it off Gabe. Gabe liked it. And so this is what we're doing. Now, of course, if we're going to talk about a movie, if we're going to talk about The Perfect Weapon, 1991, right? Kind of a classic. Uh, the, the first representation of Kempo in film, maybe? I would say the first, uh, I don't want to say blockbuster movie. That's not what I mean. But the first, like, like, real this is kempo movie. and it, it, yeah, is, it exactly. actually is kempo yes yeah if right, you know absolutely. anything about kempo like it's real kempo and jeff speakman's a real kempo guy yeah and actually has some ties to some other folks who have been on the show who are yep. kempo practitioners gabe when was the first time you saw the film uh about four days ago okay all right so i'm not the only one i hadn't seen wow. it Andrew, yeah. you've seen it a bunch. I oh, think. yeah. I saw it a lot in high school. Uh, okay. Yeah, it came out in 91. Uh, I'll date myself here. I graduated in 93, but I definitely saw it in high school. Mm, okay. And did you like it? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was a martial arts movie. I had to like it. it was, <laughs> yeah. But yes, I, I mean, if, if, if I liked Best of the Best, you know I was going to like this movie too. Well, if yeah. you like Best of the Best, any martial arts movie. I'm gonna like enjoyable. It's <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I think we can probably imagine what Andrew does with his time. He's probably watching uh various yellow belt testing videos that <laughs> kid moms put on YouTube to share with the family because that's better. It has more of a plot. Uh Gabe, what did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? I did. Now, I have not. I am not a lifetime martial artist like you gentlemen. I did not start when I was young. So my repertoire of martial arts movies is rather small. But uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, I did enjoy it very much. Um, and like you said, Jeremy, it is a very good representation of real Kempo. Yeah. Um, and so it was really fun to watch that. Even tiny little things like... Um, uh, when they're doing the whole training montage from him as mm. uh, from white belt up to brown belt. If you noticed his belt was never centered, which is a Kempo. Oh, thing. I missed that. But yeah, yeah, I made a note of that. I've never studied <laughs> Kempo, never studied Kempo at all. And I, it, because I didn't know that I made a note, like why are some, why is the master have his belt clearly tied in the center, mm -hmm. but everyone else's belt is tied off center. I, I didn't understand that. And Not so, all yeah. schools do that, but yeah. But some and do. Yeah. With uh, if I can throw a plug in here, cause the book just came out uh, the day before this recording um, Jenny's book, uh, the one that Jenny wrote, uh, Master Hopkick, The Origin Story. Yep. She studied a lot of Kaji Kempo and Kempo for that, uh, for that book. And yeah. that's one of the things that she, uh, she pointed out and uh, many other things too. She goes, oh yeah, I, I remember learning about that and yep. about that. And so, uh, yeah. I, I'm not going to be upset with you plugging a whistle kick book on a whistle kick <laughs> show. 
<laughs> you are you are more than free to do that. Yeah, that's it's over at Amazon, and it, in fact, if I remember correctly, yeah, uh, both paperback and Kindle version are there. And yes. yeah, Jenny, both Jennies worked really hard on it. Your Jenny, your wife Jenny, did a tremendous amount of research. She was emailing me. Here, we'll, I'll just close the book up with this little bit. She would email me and say, "Are you okay with this very mild historical detour?" <laughs> detour? Or would you like me to do this other thing that is completely historically accurate? And I'm like, holy cow, like you are at a detail <laughs> level that I wouldn't have even thought about doing. So yeah, um, yeah it's, it is a, it's, it's a really cool book and we'll, we'll probably do an episode on it at some point. I'll, I'll bring her on and, and we'll do all that. Yeah. So we've got this film, Jeff Speakman, who I don't know that he did any other films after so not not to my knowledge I, I don't remember seeing any i think he was uh i got the impression that that the expectation was the movie was going to do really well and that he would become the, another action star uh but i don't know that the movie did well enough for that but i i think the 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 takeaway from that then is he is incredibly well known mm -hmm. 20 years later 30 years later. 30, yep. How am I that old? <laughs> 30 years later, based on this single film. Yep, no, I've never heard anyone say anything bad about Jeff Speakman, about his skill, about this film or anything. So I, I think it's fitting that we're doing this as our, our test episode because what we're trying to do with this and I think, you know, we'll, we'll jump into what we'd actually do here in just a moment. To the audience, one of the things that was really important to us was that we do this in a way that we're not throwing people under the bus. That we're not saying this person's a terrible actor or that they're not a legitimate martial artist. You know, we are, we're not saying, here's how we'd fight Jeff Speakman. We're saying, here's how we would fight Jeff Speakman's character. So it is based 100% on what we see on screen. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. If you know that Jeff Speakman can also do X, Y, Z, but it doesn't show up in this film, it is irrelevant to the conversation because we're talking about how we would fight the character, not the actor. Yep, yep. Okay. Before we move on, Jeremy, you yeah. asked about my thoughts on the movie. I yeah. liked it. You asked when, when uh, Gabe had seen it four days ago. You had never seen it until yesterday. I, I watched believe. it last night. Yep, and what were your thoughts on the movie? I enjoyed it. Um, yep. I really enjoyed the the like the opening montage when he's kind of doing some kempo y shadow boxing because I have done just enough kempo to understand the authenticity of the kempo that was being demonstrated. And anytime martial arts is represented accurately in film, I get really excited because it doesn't happen very often. And throughout the film, I found that for the most part, that's what was going on. There was a lot of really good martial arts in this. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't do the typical thing I, I do when, when I watch a martial arts film. I didn't really nerd out and, you know, sit there with IMDB and cross-reference. Okay, this person did this and what else were they? And that's usually what I do. Uh, but I'll probably go back and do that at some point. It was fun. Did you recognize Jeff Sanders' brother? No. No, I just wanted to punch him in the face. Why? <laughs> oh, just because of, okay. Because he's, he's just being a dork. I think you wanted to punch him in the face when he was in Best of the Best as well. Oh, I'm sure I did then. He was Virgil Keller in Best of the Best. I don't remember that name. He was the hippie guy. Oh. Oh, that guy. Same right, actor. Moving on. Moving on. We have to move on. Okay. We're going to get lost. All right. Um, if you were to sum up Jeff Sanders in you know a couple sentences and his fighting style, how how would you describe that, Gabe? Um, I, I think I would say he was reactionary. He mm -hmm. never struck first, at least that I noticed, not consistently anyways. Um, he was focused on upper body mm. uh, techniques. The only time I ever saw him kick to the leg was in that final final boss scene um, with, a, with a big guy, I forget his name. With Korean Tanaka. odd job. Yeah. Professor Tanaka. There you go. Um, Korean odd but, job. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's, uh, so he, he focused a lot on upper body stuff. Yeah. 
uh, a lot of striking, um, a lot of a lot of elbows, which is yep. also very consistent with uh, Kempo. Um, and I'll give a hint to uh, a foreshadowing of my of how I would fight him. He didn't do very well on the ground. Hmm. Um, anytime he got knocked down, uh, sure. he just kind of got kicked around until he got back up. Sure. Andrew, if you had to summarize <clears throat> his fighting style, what would how would you describe it? The first thing I noticed is he is incredibly quick to anger. He gets mm. angry very quickly, and it was a, a theme throughout. Mm -hmm. The scene when he was younger, uh, he got angry about some stuff, and he reacted uh, when he was older and um, when Kim, his his friend, had passed away or was murdered, right? Uh, he took out his anger on people that tried to mug him. Uh, right. He could have easily gotten away, from that situation without doing what he did, but he was incredibly angry at the situation that he was in and lashed out. And yep. that was the first thing I noticed. He had a very hot head, very quick temper. Um, I would agree with Gabe, not a lot of low kick stuff, not, not a lot of kicks in general, um, though there were some only one wrist lock, any type of non strike mm -hmm. did he do in the entire movie. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and his use of weapons that he, you know, that he found improvised or not was, was also very good. So someone that, you know, definitely has a bit of weapon skill. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I noticed that as well. I think that the things that I noticed initially was he's incredibly fluid, very fast. You know, he's not going to throw one technique or three techniques. He's going to throw 36 techniques <laughs> consecutively. And he's not reliant on any one of them to cause the damage that he's looking for. He's looking for a, a variety of things to kind of overwhelm you. And I would imagine that that choreography was overwhelming to put together for that reason. And I think that that's what, what made him effective. I also noticed how quick he was to anger. And I think that that is the first kind of gap or opening that I would point out is that if I was going to fight him, I would try to use that to my advantage because he didn't always do, he didn't do better because he got angry. When he got angry, he got cocky and he became very blinded. And I think the best example of that was the number of times he should have been aware there were people around him and behind him yep. Yep. and he got knocked to the ground, smacked, In the gym. whatever. Yep. yep. Yeah, but it wasn't just in the gym. There, it was yeah. elsewhere too, because he got tunnel vision. I would expect because he was angry. Yep. Yep. As well in the uh, crock pit, I think was the name of the bar, where just like in the in the gym, yeah, he was one of the notes I took is that he was unaware of secondary fighters, secondary opponents. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Came out. He got him with a bottle. Yep. Yep. And and that's a, a theme. So you know we're building a kind of a personality profile here. So if you were to fight him one of the things that I would want to do is to get him angry because I don't think he's at his best when he's angry. Yeah. And there are some people who do. Some people are just so reserved that they hold back and you get him angry and oh, now you're dealing with 100% of their capacity instead of 80. Yeah, then they're more focused. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I noticed was, and I think, you know, this is of course very consistent with Kempo and what Kempo is, but how circular he was. Everything mm -hmm. was circle. Yes. His techniques were circular. They were, you know, circular in every plane. He was circular. He, he loved doing that spinning back fist. And so I think that's the second thing that I would look to exploit is the fact that circles take longer than straight lines. Yep. Yes. Anything to add? Um, <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. Circles take, take longer than straight lines. Um, but they can be blinding when they're not seen coming. Absolutely. And, and, and that, that's something that I, would have, that I would be wary of. Just not wary, cognizant of. Ooh, big word. This is a big <laughs> word. How about range? How close would you want to be to him? His, I would say, for me, his short range was incredible. Like, mm -hmm. I would not want to be in, uh, you know, within a fist's, striking distance i would either stay on the outside or i would get right in on a clinch mm -hmm. and then in, if we're getting into specific <clears throat> stuff like gabe mentioned he had almost no ground game that i saw so i would be keeping my distance and striking from afar as much as i could 
And then I would be going in for a double leg takedown of some sort to get him on the ground. Um, and I would absolutely positively not use weapons. And if I had to, it would be a six foot bow because I want to stay away from him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Game. I'm I'm right in agreement there with you, Andrew, where I would stay out of range, especially me being a shorter guy myself. I'm only five seven. Um, you know, I have to rely on my speed and my size, you know, uh, flipping it a little bit uh, in my taking it to a, like a competitive uh, fight type scenario where, you know, I've got to stay out of range. And so that's that's absolutely what I would do. How tall is Jeff Speakman? Do we know this? I, I don't know. I'll look that up while Jeremy Yeah, I, I, that but... wasn't something I pulled up, but it, it's a great point. It's something that we should be aware of. Yeah. I had kind of the same opinion that, that you guys did. And it's interesting that we're agreeing on a lot of this. And I, I suspect yeah. that we're going to find some places that we, we differ here. My general approach would be stay outside of range, attempt to close quickly with straight line, powerful kicks, you know, driving in, you know, side kicks. But I'm not looking to go to the head. I'm not even looking to go to the body. I'm looking to go to the leg. And pro depending on rule set, because that's something that, that we haven't talked about. And I don't know that we need to get bogged down in that. You know, let's just, we're talking about a fight. So it's either, you know, some kind of full contact thing that doesn't have a lot of rules or it's a street fight, right? I think yeah. we just kind yeah. of leave it generally at that. Um, I might be looking to go to the knee or just above the knee, you know, top of the thigh with a sidekick and trying to take his leg out from under him there. Uh, his stances were a little wider than I thought they needed to be at times, which tells me that he probably wouldn't be reacting to that super quickly. Now, he did have some stuff, some points where he had amazing short stances and great lateral motion. That's not something we tend to see in most martial artists. You know, he's moving side to side versus just front and back. Most of us just move front and back. And I know that if I didn't connect on that kick and he did move to the side, he'd have my back and he would probably punch me 462 times. Yeah. By the way, Jeff Speakman is six feet tall. Okay. Okay. So he's got, yeah. he's got some reach on all of us. Yeah. Yeah. But like you two, I would, you know, stay out of range and get in close uh, when I saw the opportunity, close the distance, close that gap super quick. Um, and yeah. in, in preparation for this, I was thinking about what I would do. Um, you know, and like I said, his ground game wasn't very good. And I would go, I would try to go beyond just a clinch or even uh, just me personally, Andrew, I wouldn't go for a, a double leg takeout, but I would go in, keep my head at his chest height um, to avoid getting punched or elbowed, keep my face against his chest, kind of a, a jujitsu type move, <clears throat> and then go for a take, go for a like a, a judo type throw, for a hip throw or something like that. Put him on his back as quickly as I could, and then uh, go from side control or uh, from from the ground from there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I could see that working as well. I will also say this is the the option that I gave was not my number one option. Okay, what was yours? My number one option would be to gain three hundred pounds, <laughs> and fight like the big boss at the end. Because if you remember, he did not beat Tanaka, right, with his martial arts ability. He was fighting the big guy at the end, who had a lot of weight on him. Didn't have any like he's he's shorter actually. Tanaka is only five eleven, um, and by the way, Tanaka is his real name. That's I mean that was his character name in the movie, but oh. that was his real name as well. Uh, that, he says, was a, that says a lot. Yeah, he was he was a wrestler, um, but he um, he was not doing well against that character. And the only reason he won was he threw something, his belt, and his belt which had a knife on it, and it scorpion it, belt. Yeah, and yeah. it broke. It broke something, and steam got in it. No, and it lit it on fire. And he, yeah. like, it wasn't martial arts. He did not beat that no, the just big boss guy with martial arts. So my first option would be to be just like that guy. Okay, I, I, I think we can extrapolate something from there because you know there's obviously a humorous element to what you're saying, but the gist is, he was big, he was strong, he was really rugged, he wasn't fast. No, not at all, right. and. 
if you think about what is Kempo, it's a lot of techniques really fast. Uh, and no, I'm not going to suggest that they are not powerful, but if you think about power as kind of a, a, a factor of, of both strength and speed, the power in his techniques were coming from his speed, not from his strength, not from yeah, his, using a lot of musculature. And so that was definitely a weakness that could be exploited. If you are resilient enough, and, and I'm not, but if one was resilient enough to absorb those blows without doing a lot of damage at close range, you know, grab him and bear hug him. And actually, wasn't that something that happened? Didn't he grab him and kind of like yep. squeeze him a bunch? Yeah, and, you know? and, uh, and Tanaka then just headbutted him right. yeah. and knocked him off. Right. I think we're, we're more or less in agreement on the range part. Stay outside the range and cover the distance as quickly as you can when an opening presents. But I think where we're differing is how we handle that subsequent movement. I would be looking to pick him apart. I would be in, kick to the leg, get back out as quickly as I could because I don't like being in close. Mm -hmm. I, my, my ground game's kind of meh. You know, I, probably not any better than Jeff Speakman's character. You know, I'm, I don't like being down there. I'm a small guy. People grab me. I want to go away. I want to get out of there. And I'd be looking, can I, can I pick apart his leg? If he started to show some, some weakness in that leg, you know, I might be going in, you know, with some leg, leg kicks, you know, more conventional tie kind of round kick style things and hoping that I can chop that leg out enough that that becomes my, my advantage, you know, stay to that weak side, close in, get back out and just, you know, pick him apart because yeah. if I'm in close, he's, he's got me. That's my only chance. And no one in the movie did that. Everyone that right. fought him aimed for his head mm -hmm. or aimed for his, his upper body. So, you know, we don't know how he would react in this case. Right. And it would probably take a while. And it's not exciting choreography. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How do you guys think he would react to being on the ground? In, uh, in the ways that you're talking about. And, you know, I, I don't know that I can answer because it never happened in the movie. He never really got on the ground. Um, my impression is that he, doing a ground game, because like I said, he only used a wrist lock once mm -hmm. in the entire thing. He threw somebody with a Kota Geish, I believe, uh, a wrist throw, mm. and it only happened once in the entire movie. So his, uh, from a visual observation observations always visual anyway <laughs> uh it appears he doesn't have much jujitsu game at all so uh, that's why i would take him down in that in that way and hope that i'm correct that he doesn't have any sort of jujitsu well even yeah. right before that um he got knocked down uh what because he was fighting the three guys in the taekwondo gym yeah and he kind of he kicked the one guy around a bit he went flying. The other two jumped in and just kind of laid waste to him. And when he was on the ground, you know, they kicked him back and forth a few times. And he just, he kind of just had his arms here and just, just taking those, those body mm -hmm. kicks and wasn't doing anything. And then they stood him up, you know, they punched him in the face a few times. Then he got back into it and yeah, you know, somehow bought him off. Found his second wind. Cause yeah. it's a movie. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, I, for me, being a smaller guy, I don't know if this is unusual or not, but I'm really comfortable on the ground. And <clears throat> maybe it's because I'm, I am short and I don't have the range. It's like, let's go to the ground. I'll, I'll hold on because I'm short. I've got the leverage. I have a decent amount of upper body strength. Mm. You know, I'll just hold on, wear you out. Um, and also, um, I don't mind ha having my back to the ground. I don't have any formal jujitsu training. But, uh, you know, I've gone against a couple of guys who have wrestling backgrounds and um, they want to put me on my back. Great. I'll choke you out from the front, mm. you know, from the bottom, you know. And uh, so I would go to the ground and just hold him down. And as long as he couldn't, as long as Jeff Sanders couldn't get a full swing or, um, you know, a good technique room for a good technique on. He's going to be trying to post up. You're going to be pulling him back down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
that's what I envision. Okay. So it sounds like we agree on probably half the strategy. Stay outside, close the gap quickly, do some damage, and then you two are saying, let's bring it to the ground, and I'm saying, I'm going to get back out because we're playing to our strengths. Or gain 300 pounds. <laughs> or gain 300 pounds. Yeah. That's a, that's, I think it might sit differently on me versus Tanaka. <laughs> That's fair. Given the height differential. Fair. Yeah. Or one option we haven't discussed yet is to pull the whole Indiana Jones move and just shoot him from 30 feet away. Right. <laughs> Always an option, <laughs> but not a great one. I don't know that yeah. I call that a fight. Yeah. No. yeah. It's not it's really not. martial arts either. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, it's no. not. This was, this was good. Is there anything else on your notes that we want to bring up? I, I found that I, I thought he went to that spinning back fist a surprising amount. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, but he did it so quickly that I don't think it was a weakness for him. Yeah. Uh, he's always going to underestimate you. Yeah. The only, I mean, in terms of a fight, I didn't have anything else. Um, just a couple of notes that I did find interesting. Um, sure. Another martial arts movie that didn't have a love story. Mm. Um, mm. Although the may they took a handful of scenes out from the movie and the oh, version they? they played on TV did involve a love story between who you would expect it to be. Jeff Speakman's character and uh, the girl, Jenny, I think her name was, or yeah. Mariska Haggerty. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> the only other thing I thought was weird was when he did, and maybe this is true of Kempo Dojo's um, Gabe, you might know, but when he joined the school, they had that, that young girl show him around. Well, she was only a yellow belt. Like, why did they have a yellow belt show a white belt all around <laughs> and like how to do things? And I just thought that was weird. Yeah. I think maybe that played into the scenes they cut of the love story. Yeah, perhaps. Um, and that's totally school by school. We don't have yellow belts teach our white belts anything yeah. but how to you know be a good example of how to bow and how to have respect in the dojo yeah. and i, I like the part where she you know they're sending the back fist down the line and yeah, he was yeah. somehow not ready enough that yeah. he <laughs> fell over that was a great part yeah so again all the... underestimating not being aware of what's going on and falling to the ground yeah so despite all the theme. noise they were making with yeah. with the technique he's just yeah you know daydreaming and then boom gets smacked for sure but one uh, one other comment, I, if I can add one, uh, yeah. is if I was to fight him, don't strike first. Because hmm. he is really good, like Kenpo is, at countering um, uh, countering a strike or, or a technique. And so I would try to bait him into coming in first and then... Uh, Making him angry. Yeah, exactly. All right. I think we're all roughly on the same page there. <clears throat> awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you. This was a lot of fun. And... Listeners, viewers, hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you're watching or, or listening to this, it means that we thought it came out well and we put it out there. And so if you have a movie character you'd like us to unpack, um, you know, let us know. Let me know. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. And of course, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. What, one more thing I'll add before we sure. say goodbye, that if Jeff Speakman would like to come on, and do an oh. episode with us as a rebuttal, I would absolutely encourage that. I, I, that that's a wonderful in-the-moment idea, Andrew. If the actor that we ever talk about would like to come on and offer a rebuttal, we will gladly offer them that space. That's that it. That would be really cool. That would be super cool. All right. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. <laughs>